Hello, my name is Steven O from Vitoradios.com and today I'll be tuning an XLT GMRS duplexer with a rival DSA815 Spectrum Analyzer. I just want to say before I get into the actual tuning portion of this, if you don't have a Spectrum Analyzer, don't attempt to tune your duplexer just with the radio. Um, you'll have something called a reflective wattage. And if you don't tune it right, all the reflective wattage will go right back to your radio and it could potentially fry your radio, rendering it you know, uh, a desk weight, essentially, useless. Um, let's get right into it. So the first thing you're going to do when you're tuning a duplexer is you're going to want to try to zero it out. So just if you're zeroing out a scale for when you're going to weigh, your some, weigh yourself or something, you're going to do that. You're going to zero out these cords. So right here you see I have two power line connectors. I'm going to go ahead and connect them together. And while I'm doing this, it's also very important to note don't ever put any power from like a radio to the spectrum analyzer directly. You'll fry it. So I'm going to normalize this. I'll do my reference trace to normalize it. Okay. Again, that was TG normalize on. So now that we have it normalized, we're going to unplug it. Now this works if we have input here on the right, output on the left. So I'm going to input on this right cavity. So our signal is going to come through here, like this, through this chamber, and out this one. And this um, is our dummy load. It's necessary to have this on there, otherwise we get a uh, bad reading, essentially. All right, so get right into it. What we have over here is we have a nut and we have a screw. We have to loosen the nut and tighten the screw or loosen the screw. But before we get to the actual physical tuning of it, I am going to set up the spectrum analyzer for this uh, frequency we're using. Um, so I'm tuning it to channel 21 and GMRS or peer 21, and I'm tuning the low side first, so I want to reject the high side. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is the 467700 for the low side. So I'm going to go ahead and set my frequency to 467.700. Right? I'm going to adjust my span to 10 megahertz. I'm going to adjust my clock speed to 3 gigahertz. That's kind of what I like to keep it at. When I start, it's 10 megahertz for the whole picture and have it go about 3 gigahertz for the RBW. All right, now we can see that I'll set the marker to 467.700. And there's already a marker there, it's not important for now, I can turn that marker off. But we'll see our marker right now. We want it to be at the bottom of this loop. And in spec for these duplexers is about 82. Almost 100% of the time I can get it to about 90, or below 82. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to loosen this nut, and if you're able to see the screen, when I move this, it moves that cavity. And there is three different cavities in this. So that loop right there, that is this cavity I'm adjusting. And we want, what you want to do is, uh, I don't know, co-witness is the right word? All the loops be in one loop. And it'll make it dip down as deep as it is able. And when you get them all pretty close, the next step on this, you're going to zoom in. So I'm going to change the span from 10 megahertz to 1 megahertz. And then I'm going to change my speed from 3 gigahertz. See how quickly it is? This movement right here is a lot of static. Um, and it's really in, it's inaccurate for this, uh, this close of a picture. I'm going to change it to 1 gigahertz. And it's going to slow down a bit. And here is this is where I really dial it in. Because as you can see, I already got it to about 80. Um, but I can, get a, I can get it better than that. All right. And once we tighten down and have them set up to where we want it, I'll go ahead and lower this even more to about 400 hertz. And this is going to take about 10 seconds to go through this loop, but it's also going to be very accurate. So I'll have a, a good number exactly where that's going to be. For the 467-700, I was able to get it to uh, 90 dBs, which is 10 dBs above spec for this XLT uh, duplexer. Um, and that's not to say that every time I'm going to get it to be 90, um, it's just not going to be below spec, essentially. Um, we're never going to send a duplexer that's going to be 
82 or below. It's just not going to happen. And now I am going to move this dummy load to this side, and I'm going to shift these cables over, and I'm going to tune the high side of the duplexer. All right. And the same thing as before, I'm going to uh, center the frequency. And like I said, for the high side, we're tuning it to deny traffic in the low range. So 462.700. I'm going to adjust the span to 10 megahertz. Span, again, that's your view. And I'm going to adjust the speed to 3 gigahertz. And like I said, at 3 gigahertz for a span of 10 megahertz, it's take about 1.1 second to go through there. And um, it's the best speed I've found to work for this. I'll adjust my marker to be 462.700. We can see our marker number two right there. I'm gonna do the same thing as before and co-witness my loops to get the deepest possible curve here. All right, now we've got them pretty close. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in to one megahertz and change the speed to one gigahertz. Same thing before, we are going to change the speed to about 400 hertz, and we're gonna see what our final pass is gonna be here. So the other side, we had uh, 89 to 90, and this one is about 88.98, 88, 89. Um, it'll be around there, which is perfect. And our final step of this process is we're gonna plug up to a radio and make sure that we have the correct amount of wattage coming through the radio to verify the tuning that we just did. There's also something I'd like to mention. When you're tuning these things, we have the pass-through and we have the reject. Um, and we are tuning that dip, that dip to reject those signals. And what's more important than that is having accept signals. And what you can measure that by, we'll go ahead and change our marker, and we can see that our uh, pass is up here. And that our goal is to make our pass less than um, 1.5. 1.5 or less, and that's what that's going to do is allow us the correct amount of wattage to come to the duplexer and uh, function as intended. All right, so the final pro process, final part of this, is we are going to test the wattage on these radios. So what we're going to do is you can leave the center one in, because that's essentially acting our our antenna, um, and we are going to plug that into our bird meter. And this bird meter is hooked up to a uh, another dummy load back here with your cord. Make sure to always run your uh, bird meters through your dummy load. And prior before doing this, make sure you have the correct wattage of your radio. I know this one for a fact is hitting out about 49.5 to 50 watts of power. This is a KG1000 plus. All right, so we tune this to channel 21 GMRS. So the idea behind this is we are going to change the GMR channel to 21. And for the rejection, the high side, we have uh, no pass through right here, right? So GMRS 21 is not getting any power through the duplexer on the high side. Whereas we can go to the repeater channel, it's just a five megahertz separation. And we'll go ahead and push that one through and we'll see that we are getting about 36 watts. And now, we're going to do essentially the exact same thing on the other side. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to switch these two cables. The dummy load cable coming out of uh, our GMRS radio. All right. And what we just saw last time is your Pier 21 was getting 36 watts through here. But now my calculations are correct. We're going to get exactly zero watts. Being up. Exactly, zero watts through. And I'm gonna transmit on the GMRS 21, the side that if you remember, we were getting zero watts through. So now we're gonna try on this side. And we are getting 32 watts. So it functions as intended, however, that is not the desired wattage that we're gonna to wanna to get through. So I'm gonna go back here and double check what we did to make sure it all turned out right. Because we should get at least 36 watts. That's in stack for our radio. You've got to. So on this side, as I pointed out in the last one, our uh, 
acceptance rate is 1.17, which isn't spec. If it's 1.3 or less, what we're going for here. So let me try this one more time. I might not have the cable in all the way. All right, so we verified our tuning for the low side as tightened the cables, created a little loose cable there. And now we'll shoot all the way up to about 40 watts. And the radio is without the duplexing, it's about 50. So we're in spec, we're actually above spec, very good for this duplexer. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Steven from buy2airradios.com. Come check out our duplexers, I'll tune them for you. Check it out. See you next time.